It is day three, two days after my surgery. My biggest fear was that I would have a bad reaction to the pain medication and I have not had one. Pharmacogenomics, which very simply stated, is the genetic influence on your drug response. What we envision in the future and what we're doing now, so the future is now, is measure your genetics for the, one, for the genetics that we know impact drugs in specific ways, and then figure out if drugs are likely to work for you or not work or should be as expected. Human-Wide is a pilot that we are conducting in a primary care clinic in Santa Clara. We at that clinic have also implemented a team-based care model, which we think is going to help us transform what we're doing in primary care. The focus of Human-Wide is to consider how can we leverage the best of the art and science of medicine that we have at Stanford and across the country and the world. Technology, genomics, uh, diagnostics, how do we leverage that so that we are uh, focusing on prevention and proactive care to prevent disease before it strikes. The issue that I have is that when I'm lying down in bed, I can't breathe through my nose. Um, primarily because there's not enough room in the nasal passages and also because my nostrils collapse when I breathe in. The surgery that I'm going to have will um, create more space inside the nasal passages and will also strengthen the, um, the structure of the nostrils so that they don't collapse when I breathe. I take vitamin C, magnesium, vitamin D, and I take flaxseed oil. We're going to start with this. This is a pharmacogenomics testing kit. So for this kit, um, we're just going to collect some samples from your inner cheek. Pharmacogenomics is the study of how your genetics, your ancestry, your parents, your grandparents, how that affects your response to drugs. Not everybody responds to drugs in the same way. That's kind of a natural idea, uh, but why is that? And it has to do with what you're eating, what diseases you have, but it has a big part to do with your genetic background. So how you respond to drugs is inherited, just like many other things like how tall you are, what color your eyes are, perhaps what diseases you might be at risk for. So what we wanna do is we wanna check people's DNA and then give them a report of which drugs are likely to work and which drugs they maybe should stay away from because they're either not gonna work or the side effects will not be tolerable. That's in a nutshell what we're trying to do, predict drug response by making precise measurements of the genome. Hi, good morning. Today is the 4th of May. We plan to get out to go to Los Angeles for a few days. My blood pressure is good. My heart burn much better because I changed my medicine. medicine. So everything is fine. Uh, talk to you later. Eddie's pharmacogenomics results were remarkable for a couple of things. So one was his cholesterol-lowering medication. We were able to half the dose of his statin, which is significant because for Eddie, his primary medical concern is his low back pain and his muscle aches. And we do know that statins can cause muscle aches. Nice to see you. You too. I'm Dr. Altman. I'm Welcome Eddie. to the pharmacogenomics clinic. In this clinic, though, we're focusing on your response to drug, and we've learned that we can find uh, di small differences in the DNA that might make you, for example, metabolize a drug more quickly and get rid of it, so it's not actually in your bloodstream as long as it might be for somebody else. Or it might work better for you than for other people because of a little difference in your DNA. Well, specifically, I'm concerned about narcotic pain medications because I'm going to be having surgery, and the surgeon has strongly recommended that I take narcotic pain meds after my surgery for the pain. Have you had bad experiences previously? Primarily, uh, I get really dizzy and um, disoriented, sort of drunk and, you know, high, 
Wow. And um, I don't have any pain relief, so I just feel awful. That's even worse. Yeah. So you're getting all the side effects, but not any of the right. benefits. And then I itch. I itch terribly oh, all over my very everything. Very common. There might be even drugs that have not even been released on the market yet that will be impacted by some of these genetic differences. And so it would be useful even going into the future to know uh, about your status for some of these um, for some of these enzymes. So the first one that I'm gonna highlight is this enzyme CYP2D6. So you're a slow metabolizer for this enzyme, but the important thing is that this enzyme is responsible for metabolizing like 50 or 100 drugs, mm -hmm. which means right off the bat, there are 50 or 100 drugs that I might recommend you get a lower dose of or less frequently, okay. including some of these opioid narcotics that you were talking about. I think that there, we're, what we'll recommend is uh, opioid medications that don't get metabolized by this enzyme, so it's totally taken off the table. Today is day five, Tuesday. My surgery was on Friday. I'm not feeling very much pain right now. I didn't have any of the foggy headedness that I considered a negative side effect. If we can bring pharmacogenomics to the front lines of medicine, I think we have a better chance of managing health instead of managing disease. And so that's where precision health is a powerful idea where we're trying to keep people out of the system by giving them the minimum medication at the right time and not have their diseases progress, get worse, and become chronic diseases.